Howdy y'all, Dean Stilly here from the official home of unofficial Grateful Dead and Music News. Reporting on night three, the band's in the Big Apple. Uh, so, well, it's, they're in Queens, close enough to consider it the Big Apple, I guess. Uh, this one I thought was a roaster all the way through, loved it. Uh, so, the people that love to hate on the band will, uh, will love to hate on this review. People that love to love everything they do uh, will probably like it much better. I could care less either way. I'm way past uh, giving a damn what uh, uh, tone deaf strangers on the internet have to say, that's for sure. So, so I should do a review of my review I, as, as I look on this. This right now, I'm gonna say that the lighting uh, in this room for reviews is atrocious. The production uh, quality and value is, is horrific, and, and sometimes the content is questionable. So uh, there you go. There's there's my review on the review. Just one guy getting the conversation started. A pastime of deadheads forever. In between the music. We talk about the music. So let's get started with that. Band gets things underway. We let the good times roll. Absolutely love them busting this one out. Uh, so I loved it back in the Grateful Dead days as an opener, and I liked it just as much last night. Everybody gets a chance to sing a little bit, and uh, that, that let the good times roll. That's a good message, a good song, and I absolutely loved it being added to the repertoire. So on, uh, Bertha comes after that. Bertha, we're not going to be hurting for pace here. Uh, Birth is sounding good. There's some power behind it. John, he's ready to uh, rock out with his rooster out. It's a, a, a good time. They finally listened to some old tapes, learned how to end the song, so uh, that, that that's a positive. Uh, we can give them a high five for that. Uh, good Lovin' comes up next. Uh, good Lovin', uh, Birth of Good Lovin' is a great combination. You get Big Railroad, love that. Big Railroad, one of those tunes back in the day. Didn't get a ton of repetition, so always appreciated when it came around, and I, I thought it was great. Uh, so Ramble on Rose, Jeff. He finds the spot in Ramble on Rose and he tears it up. Uh, he's he's outstanding on that one. He, he really, on the piano, just kills that. So uh, that was outstanding. They love each other up next. Get a little bit of a breather there. So, uh, Cassidy, Cassidy is, is moving very slow. Cassidy was almost moving so slow, we almost couldn't sing as slow as the song was moving. But the song got a little drippy and found some interesting uh, psychedelic moments throughout as it always Always does perhaps a little abbreviated than usual I don't maybe it was just my experience I don't really look at timestamps or anything they close it out with Casey Jones that's a strong first set uh, the first set I thought was very good so I'm looking as I'm thinking to myself is mrs. Weir must have joined the tour in New York now I could listen I could be wrong I don't know a damn thing about uh, what they do or what anybody does or anything about their lives I'm never gonna pretend to but I, when mrs. Weir's around I think uh, I think she probably combs Bob's hair it, she may take care of his hair when she's around so it may maybe he just makes sure he's looking extra pretty when Mrs. Weir's around uh, because uh, it looked like the band like Vidal Sassoon came uh, backstage did everyone's hair a bit Billy he looked like he got a hot oil treatment uh, before the show as hair looking fabulous Weir he was well coiffed this was a well groomed John got a blowout I think uh, th this band was uh, well, well done well done everybody looking extremely presentable uh, on this night. Uh, that doesn't matter. It's just fun to talk about. Uh, so, and let's get it. Uh, so the intermission's over. So we get the eyes. Uh, eyes, to me, it started to seem like it was a bit subdued. Uh, so there's a little bit too much space in there to breathe, and I don't think any breathing gets done, really. It's uh, just a lot of waiting. There's a difference, I guess, between breathing and waiting. That one, I'm just always waiting for the next verse to come. So, But then they get around to uh, jamming that one, and it's always a good time. That, that one one, O'Teal takes a solo at the end, uh, does a great job with that. Uh, Uncle, Je Uncle John's follows. Uncle John started a little bit uh, slow, but I t John found something in there and just started tearing it up. He, 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 he linked up with with Kreutzmann at one point and two of them found something extremely interesting and knew that they were exploring. They show it on the stream, it's very clear that they're linked up together but Billy refuses to look John in the eyes for fear of falling in love. I'm sure. As, as, as John's looking at Billy. Billy, he's just looking at his drums. He, he can't look directly at John while John's playing for fear of falling in love. So as, anyway, as, out of that 
you get China Doll, China Doll, beautiful and amazing. O'Teal singing uh, so far on this tour, the, the times we've got to hear him, he, he's, he's really found it. He's found a, a, the great space in the songs to lay down the lyrics and uh, unrushed and so he, he's got just the right amount of pause on him right now and uh, so I thought he was tremendous uh, on a singing John amazing throughout that one uh, it's a, extremely emotional moments there for the China doll uh, they show Mickey there at some point he, he's trying to sing along and uh, I'm, holy shit looks like Jack fucking Nicholson is there as, as I never saw it before but uh, they, they put the screen on Mickey he was singing trying to sing the words I don't know what he was singing uh, uh, looked like Jack Nicholson uh, coming through the door in The Shining. It, it was hilarious. I absolutely love that. Uh, love Mickey forever. So uh, then here's that hot spot we're getting uh, just just prior to drums. Uh, so we got Help Slip, Frank, Scarlet Fire. Now the China Rider gets that spot. That spot is the hot spot uh, so far uh, for things to develop. They're putting the big ones right there before drums and I thought China Cat was fabulous. I mean, that song, those jams in that song, they had more layers than desserts at the diner. I mean, there was all kinds of textures and flavors coming at you during those jams and I thought they were outstanding. Ryder, it seemed like they kind of almost slowed to almost to stop and I was hoping, holy cow, I hope the the rider doesn't end up being this slow, but as uh, they picked it up, uh, John, he, he kind of took charge and uh, uh, he's killing it. He, he, he just, he picked it up right away, so it came on awfully slow, but it got some wheels under it in a hurry. Uh, the show and the fans, the fans are having a blast there. So, I mean, they showed it, the, the group of ladies, the, they're dancing, they're having the time of their life. They're, they're dancing uh, like they're hungry and it's raining falafels. Uh, I mean, they, they, they couldn't look happier. That's what it's all about. Basking in the music, unbridled joy coming from the inside out. And it was apparent when they did some crowd shots that uh, people were absolutely having a ball there. Uh, Mayor and Weir, uh, they find a spot in the rider. Uh, they're right there together. They find a spot. They just dissected the heart out of that song, held it up for everybody to witness, and the church said hallelujah. <laughs> that was a good time. Uh, rider uh, is uh, unbelievable when they got to it. Uh, so, uh, O'Teal shaking that ass. I mean, this is musical exploration at its finest, coming at, from everywhere and everyone. I thought it was a great jam. Jeff started getting a piece of it at the end. They busted it wide open. Uh, that was a great time had by all. Drums, great mood created by uh, Mickey and Billy, O'Teal a little bit on that. Uh, space, absolutely loved it. I actually thought this was this was an incredible space. It was an interesting space. You get the Spanish jam. Uh, that's just uh, always a sign of good things to come. That's like when my wife starts lighting candles in the bedroom. Uh, that's a harbinger of good things to come. Uh, and the Spanish jam was just like that incredibly interesting space that I loved. Out of it, you get Althea. So Althea post space. John, he, he's so excited to play Althea. He, he's he's all uh, he's more excited than the song. It's like it's like banging your head to they love each other. He jumping around up there. It's at four times the speed of the song. He's just excited to get it out. And I thought he might have been more excited than the song calls for. But was, boy, when he settled in, it's funny. When he sang, settle back. Easy. He should have said John. And, and uh, he settled back into it. He made musical love to that song like a man that's going to prison tomorrow. Uh, I mean, that was a, an incredible piece. Thought he jammed that out. So one thing I noticed... Weir, the most non-abrasive tones coming from Weir, he was so low in the mix, you'd think Dan Healy was back. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. I thought it was good. I absolutely loved it. Stella Blue, uh, Weir was, I think, tremendous on. I absolutely loved him on Stella Blue. Uh, so little by little, Weir's britches are getting littler and littler. He, he started out with my son's sweatpants, 
it's, and it's, I'll tell you what, the, the bridges, they're getting literally, we may get denim before this thing is over because the shorts are getting shorter. And uh, Weir, you're looking good, Bob. You're looking good. It got to be Mrs. Weir in the building because uh, Bob is extra presentable tonight. Looking great. So, uh, really, no mayor on that one. Didn't get much of a solo on the Stella, but well sung by, uh, by Bob. U.S. Blues closes it out, and that's a whole lot of fun. It was very obvious uh, that this band was having a really good time, as they typically do when they're in New York. Uh, so, so you get the wake for the encore. Uh, the wake, uh, so it, it's amazing. It is, it is everything was so powerful and emotional. And Jeff. He, he took his verse, he sounded like Grateful Dead Pavarotti, and, and, and Weir on that last verse was so rich with emotion and, 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 and so dramatic about how he put that one across and the harmonies. Well, they were fabulous. And then, uh, just like Fish, You Enjoy Myself, they put a vocal jam at the end uh, for put the load, put the load, put the load, put the load. I'm just kidding. It was terrible, but I figured I'd give you a chance to see what it might sound like if I actually liked that song. But uh, the way it was as bad as it usually was. Now, that might not be true. It was bad, but it was a better form of bad than usual. I thought the harmonies were 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 uh, were, were decent on that one. The whole uh, put your load segment uh, at the end vocal jam, uh, as if it wasn't bad enough, you get that. So anyway, I thought it was a solid show there at City. I love you all forever. I, I'm gonna think I couldn't make it last night. I had commitments uh, that I wasn't able to get out of. Uh, to, I think I'm gonna head to Philly. I think I might head to Philly and party with you all in Philly. Uh, I love you forever and we'll talk to you soon.